please keep your questions short and pose the questions on the topic. You may ask one question at a time. May we have the first question from the brother's side. Okay, do we have a non-Muslim brother on this mic? Please. I had posed the same question in the morning and I was asked to ask the question to Dr. Zakir Nayak. There are three questions actually. The first one is, Islam says on the day of Qayyamah, the Ruh will rise to reach Allah. Can you explain the Ruh in scientific terms or in consciousness? Being a doctor, I think you should be in a position to enlighten me. Well, that was a question that in Islam it says that on the day of Qayyamah, the Ruh will rise. What is Ruh? What is this Ruh? Most to explain scientific terms. Ruh, if you translate, means soul. Allah says in the Quran, in Surah Imran, chapter number 3, verse number 185, Allah says, Kullu nafsin zaykatul maut. Every soul shall have a taste of death. The Arabic word Ruh is translated as soul. In terms of science, can I explain scientifically the concept of soul? See, human being is normally made up of a body. There's life and soul. Without soul, human being is as good as dead. Therefore, Quran says that in the sleep, in the sleep, the roo goes away and comes back. Physically, the human being is living. He's living. It's somewhat like a taste of death. You know, there, it is like, you know, when you sleep, your roo goes away. The person is physically alive. In scientific terminology, in scientific terminology, death is, as a doctor, cessation of life. Means if your heartbeat stops, if your brain stops, you are dead. Islam doesn't agree with this scientific meaning. Therefore, Allah says, death will come to you. In Islam, death is a thing. It is not cessation of life. As a doctor, in medical terminology, death is cessation of life. Heartbeat stops, brain stops, ECG flat, man is dead. In Islam, Allah says, in Surah Mulk, chapter number 67, verse number 2, Allah says, Allazi khalaqal mawta wal hayata. Allah has created death and life to test which of you is good in deeds. So death is a creation. It is not cessation of life. In scientific terminology, if life is not dead, it is dead. In Islam, it's not like that. And Allah says in the hadith, on the day of judgment, Allah will get the death and he will destroy it. Means after this world is finished, in the hereafter, there will be nothing like death, it will be destroyed. So that is how we differ between science and Islam. And one thing to be noted, brother, that science has not reached so far. It can describe everything. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the creator. He is the khalik. He is far superior than the best scientists of the world. He is our creator. He is the best scientist of the universe. And I have given the talk on Quran and modern science. And I have proved in that talk that this Quran is not a book of science. S-C-I-E-N-C. -E it's a book of signs. S-I-G-N-S. -S. It's a book of ayats. There are more than 6,000 ayats, 6,000 signs in the glorious Quran, out of which more than 1,000 speak about science. Though it's not a book of science, many things told in this Quran 1,400 years back, science has come to know recently. 50 years back, 100 years back, 200 years back. It speaks about the creation of the universe, the Big Bang, which science came to know recently. It speaks that the earth is spherical in shape which we came to know recently. It speaks the light of the moon is reflected light. It speaks about botany, that the plants are made in sexes, male and female. It speaks about creatures and human beings created from water. It speaks about geology. It speaks about biology, about embryology, and on and on. More than a thousand verses. What the Quran speaks about science, whatever the Quran says about some things, 80% has been proved to be 100% correct. 80%. The remaining 20% is ambiguous. Neither right, neither wrong. What my logic says, when 80% is 100% correct, the remaining 20% is ambiguous. Not even 0.1% is proved to be wrong. Neither right, neither wrong. So what I say, Inshallah, God willing, even that 20% will be right. So Quran talks about heaven, which science hasn't discovered. Quran speaks about life after death, which science hasn't discovered. Quran speaks about jinn, which science hasn't discovered. Quran talks about ru, science hasn't discovered. So human being is made up, Allah says he has put the ruh in the human being. So in scientific terminology, we know about the body. Science hasn't reached far to talk about the ruh. 
therefore i'm telling you that science doesn't talk about true maybe after 50 years 100 years later 200 years later science didn't speak about big bang they came no recently but quran mein phone nahi so scientifically science has an advanced so far to talk about true but today science tells us that when animal dies there is no loss of weight but when a human being dies immediately when he dies there is loss of weight so some scientists have said that this loss of weight can be attributed to soul animals have no soul i am not talking about later on when there's aigar mortis and all but immediately when human being dies there's immediate loss of weight so scientists say it can be this loss of weight is because the ruh goes away so this ruh is the main allah says has blown the ruh into every human being it is a soul scientifically we can't describe it is the word of allah it is a ruh so scientifically this body will die Allah says, "In this world we come, we die. Again, we'll be resurrected. On the day of judgment, we'll be resurrected. We'll come back to life. So, main thing is the ruh that is there. So, depending upon the good and the bad deeds you do, if you follow the commandments of Almighty God, you go to Jannah. If you don't follow the commandments, if your bad deeds are more, you go to Jahannam, hellfire. So, this ruh is the main thing which is there, which science so far hasn't described because science is not that advanced. Hope that answers the question. Do you have a related question? I think that you need an explanation. Okay, then how do you experience within the body? If you can't explain scientifically, I think tell me what does it do to your body? Some way you can experience the goodness of this particular the soul, which makes question. a difference. The brother has asked the question: You can experience. If you can experience, how can you not prove scientifically? There are many things we can experience which we can't speak scientifically. So I gave you a full talk to prove that has to be subjective. I am not blindly believing in soul. It is a logical belief. and i've told you scientifically that what the quran says i'm not blindly believing in in hell so you tell me how can you prove scientifically about hell i can't how can you scientifically prove about heaven if you can't prove it doesn't exist so what i'm trying to tell you brother i am a student of science i am a medical doctor by profession many things science has in advance because the doctors don't know so what this soul allah says is the main thing of the human being this soul will go and that will be the main thing in the year after so what we have to do brother in this world is follow the commandments of allah subhanahu wa taala if we follow the commandments of allah subhanahu wa taala the next life in the next life we go to jannah jannah if you don't follow if you disobey we will go to jannah okay you are talking about uh, cardiac arrest and the brain death right now Brother, when you are talking about has cardiac a... arrest and brain death see again you are asking me some things of medical science are you a medical doctor sir a medical doctor fine in cardiac arrest and brain death there's something like no exactly my point comes up from there itself yes. you say a ca- cardiac arrest a person dies and you said and i was said that. did i say that no no did you, i say that you didn't say but so why are you putting words in my mouth i never said that in cardiac arrest Just you have to die you may die you may not die i am a doctor that's and exactly, you being a doctor that's something... exactly what my point is when a person has a cardiac arrest if we we revive him couple of minutes time he survives that's what is that makes a difference that's exactly my question that's, is now ah, now what you're talking about no. is suspended animation exactly you know? exactly ah, you were Suspe- technical you're a doctor speak suspended and we have several no, cases is, no wait wh- wait you have asked a question let me reply see question should be short the answer is there you ask a question let me give you the reply you are talking about cardiac arrest you know in cardiac arrest we see the pulse is gone the ecg is gone we try and revive we pump the heart we put a fibrillator card the ventilator whatever he may come back we are trying to revive so therefore islamically he hasn't died but medical terminology if the brain is flat eeg ecg said is dead so how can science how can he be revived so that's what we say that science is limited many a time the person is revived even after 5 10 minutes we know cases as medical doctors that people have been revived after 10 20 minutes right or no so islamically is not dead islamically is not dead the rule is there medically we can say okay eeg is flat ecg is flat the brain is not functioning it is brain death many a time the person goes in coma brain death but he is living heart is pumping brain death so we say brain death that's a medical terminology but the person is at living 
He's not dead. Only brain has died. So today when we say medically, the brain should stop functioning, heart should stop functioning, pulse should not beat, and we have got 10 criteria. It keeps on changing. The definition of death keeps on changing. Therefore, in Islamic terminology, death is not the same as medical death. Death is not the same. Death is the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, in Hindi we say, Mot aati hai. Death has come. You say, what death has come? In scientific terminology, it is garbage. Death doesn't come. When life ceases, death is there. But it is right. In the Hadith and the Quran, it says death comes. Death comes means it is not only absence of the living functions. In Islamic terminology, it is far superior to that. Death means the soul has gone away. And it may include cessation of heart, then the brain will stop functioning, EEG is flat, EEG is flat. That is one of the criteria. So therefore I say death according to science and death according to Islam differs. So that is the beauty of Islam when it talks. And soul is the key. The soul yet remains. The human body dies. Yes, thank you for agreeing. No, no. That's exactly where I was trying to bring you down to. Now the question is, does this soul get into the body on the day of Qayamat and raise it? That was the main question. I think now this you please answer that. Ah, simple question. If you can go back and see the cassette, your question was different. Your question was scientifically can you say what is Ru and then in the ending you say does this soul get into the body? So that was the part which I thought was not that important. What you said scientifically prove the soul, what is soul and you gave a... Okay fine, your basic question is does the soul enter the body? Simple question. Seven verse of the Quran. Now, I go to the background because maybe you may not be having knowledge of what the Quran says. Yes, the soul goes into the body. Now you will ask, what body? Body has disintegrated. People are buried. Body has gone, disintegrated. Some people are burnt. Hindus are burnt. Muslims are buried. We have been dust. Allah gives the reply. In Surah Qiyamah, chapter number 75, verse number 3 to 4. Allah says, when they ask you, that how will Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be able to reconstruct the bones on the day of judgment? Allah gives the reply. Tell them, Allah can not only reconstruct the bones, He can even reconstruct the very fingertips. <laughs> Today science tells us, it was Sir Francis Goldin in 1880 who discovered the fingerprinting method and said that no two fingerprints, even in a million people are identical. So Allah is talking reconstructing the body? Reconstructing the bones, he can even reconstruct in perfect order the very fingertips. So this is the reply Allah gives. He can reconstruct and the soul will put and hisab kitab the day of judgment. Allah says in Surah Al-Imran, I'll just complete the ayat which I quoted. Surah Al-Imran chapter 3 verse 185. Kullu nafsin Every soul shall have a taste of death. But the final recompense will be on the day of judgment. All those who have entered Jannah, and safe from the hellfire, they have achieved the objectives of this world. For this world is nothing but plain amusement. Hope that answers the question. We request you to make a me near yeah, the non mic. Non-Muslims are most welcome. I normally prefer questions from non-Muslims. That's more challenging to me. Be sure that you're safe here. Nothing will happen. You can ask any questions. You can criticize the Quran. You can attack the Quran. I'm young, but I can take it. I'm a mujahid, but I can take it. Mashallah. <laughs>